Welcome to my Rayman 3 fan remake devlog series. I invite you to join me as I talk about my journey of learning Unreal Engine and programming. I will go over how I made this blank scene turn into this. Come on, I'm kidding. Hey, I like that outfit on you. When does it come off? I'll be showing the models I've made, C++ code, and blueprint code. All right, let's dive in. This week, I want to talk about recreating the point system as well as making the point counter UI. Okay, so let's see what happens once I grab this crystal. The crystal plays an animation. There also spawns this 10 points to indicate how much points I got and the UI updates with the amount of points I got. Also, there's this combo mode where Things get really cool. if you get some more points while combo mode is on, then as soon as combo mode stops, those combo po points get added to the total points. I'd also like to refer to the Rayman 3 wiki for the scoring system because there are some things happening that aren't obvious from that gameplay. There are two different combo timers one lasts two seconds and the other six seconds. The two second combo timer is reserved for whenever you pick up things like the jewels or the piggy banks. And the six second timer is reserved for killing enemies. So when you defeat an enemy, then you have six seconds before the combo mode stops. And the other thing that's happening kind of under the hood is that there's a combo multiplier going on. So the first one to five objects that you pick up behave normally where their points just get added into the combo timer and then the combo points are added to your points. But the more objects you pick up, the more valuable everything is in the combo counter. As it's written here, every object between the sixth and 10th object will have their points doubled and added to the combo counter. And it goes on like this every five objects. So between 11 to 15, the points are tripled. Between 16 and 20, they are quadrupled. And, and then the maximum is when the points are quintupled. Okay, let's do this. For the crystal models, I took the exact same models that were in the game. I don't think there's really any need to upgrade them. And a quick look at the shader. I'm using rotate about world axis and fix rotate about axis normals. And I plugged in the Fresnel node to the emission channel just because I think they look pretty cool this way. First, let's start with making the crystals move around Rayman when he collects them, as well as making this particle system. To make the crystal rotate around Rayman, there's this node called Rotate Vector Around Axis that I'm using. The vector I feed in is the player's forward vector multiplied by negative 50. You can consider this the starting location of the crystal when it, start, when it starts rotating. For some reason, I just decided that I want its rotation to start from behind the player. There's no particular reason for that. I multiplied it by 50 because you can consider this vector to be kind of the radius of the rotation. So this way the crystal will be rotating around the player at a distance of 50 units from him. The angle degree I'm feeding is increasing every frame. So this is what actually makes the crystal rotate around Rayman over time and not just snap to some kind of location. And for the axis, I of course chose choose the Z axis. So this basically handles creating the circle on which the crystal is located. But I, but I now need to actually put the circle somewhere in the world. So this is this pivot location variable. And of course the pivot location is set to the player's location. Since I want to create a cir circle around the player along which the crystal will be moving. Now to give the crystal a little more natural movement when the player is running around, I use a lerp. Otherwise the crystal seems a little too stiff. So that's the movement around Rayman, but the crystal also moves upwards. So I also add an upward vector to the crystal every frame that I feed through a lerp to give it smoother movement. Now, I didn't want the crystal to start moving upwards right away. So I have this branch over here in which the condition is the orbit angle. I made it so the crystal doesn't move upwards until the orbit is at least minus 720. So that's two rotations. This way the crystal first rotates around Rayman twice 
and then it starts moving upwards. And then one more thing, after the player overlaps with the crystal, I destroy the crystal after 3 seconds so the crystal doesn't travel upwards indefinitely. And then there's the particle system, nothing new to discuss here, just some curl noises and trails and reused materials. By the way, I used the flare texture for the ribbon here. The same one I used for the shooting stars and for the butterfly particle systems. So I guess you could call this a bit of a clever way to reuse assets. I put this particle system in the blueprint itself, disable auto activate, and then just set it to active once Rayman overlaps with the crystal. Okay, so let's try to go over how the point system is made. I stored the points on the player pawn. I don't know if that's something I should be doing, but is the way it is, at least for now. So Rayman has a variable for points, for combo points, for the collection multiplier, that is the multiplier when Rayman collects more than five objects in combo mode, and collection group. This one drives the timer, so if the collection group is zero, that means Rayman picked up something that gives you a two second combo timer, and if collection group is one, that means Rayman picked up something that gives him the 6 second combo timer. So when he defeats an enemy, that's when we set the collection group to 1. Okay, so maybe let's start with what happens when we pick up the crystal. First we get, get Rayman's current points, and then we set his points by taking his current points and adding the point value of this crystal. So if this was the yellow crystal, we would add 10 points to his current value. And then we check if Rayman is in combo mode. So if this was the first crystal he picked up, or if he picked up this crystal while being already in combo mode. Let's imagine he was not in combo mode yet. So this is false. So what we do now is just call his combo mode function that we'll go over in a moment. If combo mode was already true, however, we get his collection multiplier, we get his current combo points, and add this point value to the current combo points to set his new combo points. And then we set his new collection multiplier by adding 1 to his collection multiplier. So his co collection multiplier maybe isn't actually his collection multiplier. I should change his name. This is just the amount of objects that he has collected while in combo mode. And this over here is what kind of turns the amount of objects he collected into an actual collection multiplier. Because I divide the amount of objects he picked up by 5 and then round it up to an integer. So for example, if he picked up eight objects, I divide it by five and running it through a ceiling gives me two, which is correct because I want the eighth object to count for double in the combo point meter. However, I see I didn't clamp this to be no more than five. I just figured why stop at five? <laughs> if the player can get more, let him. I can always change this later. By the way, after I was done with the crystal, I converted this whole setup that we discussed into a blueprint function called add points that I can just drop into any blueprint so I don't have to copy and paste that whole thing every time. Okay, so that that's how the crystal adds points to Rayman. Now let's check out the combo mode function. This function determines whether Rayman is currently in combo mode or not. So once the combo mode function fires, we set combo mode to true and then we check in which collection group Rayman is at the moment. So if we should start the two second timer or the six second timer. These timelines just have a linear curve that goes from one to zero. Let's ignore the combo time percent for now. So I always make these timelines play from the start. So the timer resets where, whenever we pick up something or defeat an enemy. And also in update, if we look if we follow around this squiggly line, the update of one combo timer stops the other combo timer. That way, if we picked up something that gives us a two second timer, we stop that six second timer and vice versa. And once one of these combo timers finishes, we set combo mode back to false. Then we add in all the combo points that we gathered during combo mode to our current point value and then reset the combo points to zero and reset our collection multiplier back to one. I hope all this makes sense. And now if I print my point values on the left, you can see if I collect the crystal, I get 10. If I collect another one, I get 20. After two seconds, it changes to 30. 
So now I would like to add the UI for the points. And while we're at it, let's make a health bar. Okay, so here are the UI elements I made. I wanna first show them in action and then go over how they work. I think that makes it easier to see what's going on. So if I start collecting these crystals, we see the point counter does this animation where it jumps up and down while points are updating. Also, the last digit kind of seems like it's scrolling through the counter. And also I made the combo, the combo counter that's below the main counter move smoothly. You know, when I was playing this game as a kid, I always thought that it was really lame how in the opening cutscene that combo counter moves smoothly, but when you play the actual game, it just jumps back and forth. So I guess it's entirely possible that in actuality, I started this whole project just so I can fix the combo counter. Okay, believe it or not, I made the UI elements actually also in ZBrush. I just can't draw for the life of me. So I first sculpted them and then kind of overpainted them in Photoshop. So here are the UI elements, my beautifully painted health bar and it counters the combo counter and a point counter. And here they are in the UI. So a couple of things to note, I have the animation that plays whenever I'm gaining points. Every one of these zeros is a different text object, a separate one. So like the last one is called points 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. The next one 0, 0, 0, 1, 0 and so on. Also, I decided to make it six digits instead of five because I heard that in the original, in one of the levels, you are able to get actually max points. It kind of caps out. So I figured why not increase that ceiling? Yeah, and the combo counter is behind the main counter. So now let's move into the graph. Okay, I do this whole thing in the tick. Let's ignore these nodes for now because they handle the health bar and move on to the point system. So we get Rayman's current points and we get his current combo points as well as we get this elusive combo time percent I was talking about earlier. So this is what I use to make the combo counter hide back behind the main counter smoothly. It's set here in the combo mode function that we checked out earlier. And it basically gets a value between zero and one, depending on where we are on the timer at the moment. So like you remember, the timer starts at one and stops at zero. So if we're just starting the combo, then combo time percent will be one. And once we end the combo, the combo time percent will be zero. So now this UI element has its own current points and current combo points variables. And the idea is to compare them with Rayman's current point value. So let's say this UI current point value is 50 and so is Rayman's, but Rayman takes damage so he loses one point. Then current points will be larger than Rayman's current points that we're comparing it with. So we will move to this flow pin over here. So we will subtract one from our current points. That way in the next frame, when we compare the UI's current point value and Rayman's current point values, they will be equal and we can essentially do nothing. Now let's say they both have 50 points again, but Raymond grabs a yellow crystal. So suddenly he has 10 more points than the point counter. Then what we do, we add one point to the point counter this frame. So now next frame, the point counter will be only nine points behind Rayman. And we do this every frame until we reach Rayman's actual point value. And I hope you can imagine how this handles that animation of the counter kind of scrolling through the points until it hits Rayman's point value. Now for this kind of illusion that the points are scrolling on the counter, what I just do is whenever we change the last digit, I randomize the position of that digit in the Y axis in a set range. So it kind of looks like it's scrolling, but it's actually just jumping between different positions. That's what why once this UI's current point value is equal to Rayman's current point value, I set this last digit's position back to its starting position so it doesn't stay somewhere in that random location. Then there's this animation that I want to be played while we're gaining points. And that's just done over here. Use the play animation node, except I have this branch over here to check if the animation is already playing so it doesn't revert back to the first frame every frame. 
And also if we look at the flow for when the point values are equal to each other, that's when we stop this animation. And then this over here does the exact same thing, but for the combo point counter. So there's no reason to go over this one. The only difference is that I have the combo point counters starting position and it's position where I want it to be when we're in combo mode. And I lurk between those two positions using the combo time percent so that we have that smooth movement where it hides behind the point counter. Now, the only thing that hasn't been said is how I convert this point value into single digits. So the UI element knows that, for example, if we have, let's say 125 points, that this one, sh this number should be five, this number should be two, and this number should be one. So for that, I have these functions that are attached to every one of those numbers. Like for example, the last digit, what it does, it takes the current point value it divides it by 10 and then and then displays the remainder of that division. So if we imagine, for example, 123 points, we divide it by 10 and we get 12 and remainder three. And then similarly, let's say for the second to last digit. So if we try the same example here of 123 again, we divide 123 by 10, which gives us 12.3. We use a floor and that gives us 12. And then if we divide 12 by 10 again, we get one and remainder two. And two is the second to last digit of 123. Every other digit on the point counter is the exact same, except I just have to increase the number with which I divide it. So the third to last has to be divided by 100. The fourth to last has to be divided by 1000 and so on. And that's it for the whole point system. While we're on the topic of UI, we can quickly go over the health bar. So I have this progress bar element, which uses some kind of percentage to decide how much of it should be displayed. And if we go to our percentage function, it gets the player's max health. And then I have this health progress variable that's essentially the current health. So if I divide our current health by our max health, then we get a percentage value to scale the health bar by. So if we have five out of 10 health, the health bar will be filled 50%. The reason I have this health progress instead of just current health is I didn't want the health bar to snap to the health percentage. I wanted some kind of smooth transition. So I needed something to feed into the lerp. So every frame I lerp from this health progress value to the current health. And that way, if I get hit by an enemy, the transition on the health bar is smooth. Now there's the on-screen numbers that pop in whenever Rayman gets points. For this, I took the original texture and made a particle system. So this is the material, doesn't do much. It just takes in the particle alpha to, so the numbers fade out instead of disappear. And now here in the particle system, I have this user variable that I want to feed into the particle system. And what this does is, is if the point value is three, then this particle will spawn. If it's four, then this one. If it's five, then this, and so on. And to do this, you need to use the sub UV stuff in the particle system. So what this does is kind of divide the texture into smaller textures that you can kind of animate between. This is usually used for flipbook. However, instead of animating this, I just use the start frame offset to decide which image should be displayed. And I drive it through the point value variable. So if we look at this texture over here, this is frame 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. In the particle system, it matches. So this system is spawned when com whenever combo mode is fired, because combo mode always fires whenever we pick up something. And here I have this variable added points for particle. And I set it in my add points function that I mentioned earlier over here. So the way this works now is that it compares the point value of whatever I picked up with 30. And if it's less than 30, then I display the second frame of the particle system. So the 10 points, if it's equal to 30, then it displays the fourth frame. So 30 points. And if it's more than 30, then it displays the 10th frame, so 1,500 points. 
This is not a great system because it omits all the other point values. Just at the time, I didn't know better. <laughs> and I figured that these are the only three point values that I get during this level. So this is kind of a temporary solution. If I were to do this now, I would use a map instead. You know, actually let me fix this right now. This is a super simple fix. I can delete these. And I'll make a new local variable. I'll call it point map. I change it to an integer and of type map. And now I can set uh, all the elements here. So if I get 10 points, then I want to display the second frame of the particle system. If I get 30, I want to display four. If I get 100, I display six. 250 is eight. And 1,500 is 10. And now I get this point map and use a find and just plug in my point value. So if I get 10 points from something, then it finds that for 10 points, it needs to give me the second frame. So I can plug this straight into the added points for particle. And that's basically the whole setup. So much simpler, much cleaner, and already handles all of the other frames. Okay, now let's check if this is still working after my changes. Okay, 10 points and 30. Awesome. So the last thing I want to do before ending this video is updating the crab and the gnomes to give the player points when they get destroyed. So let's start with the crab. Since I made that blueprint function, it's as easy as just typing in add points and dropping it in. I set the point value to the crab's point value and the collection group to one. So the combo timer lasts for six seconds. And now for the gnome, I also just add the add points function with 10 points and a collection group of zero. And one more thing that needs to be done here is to spawn the yellow crystal whenever this gnome gets destroyed, since that's the behavior that we had in the original game. Okay, so the gnome gets destroyed, gives me points, spawns the crystal, awesome. And now the crab, we charge the fist, hit the crab, and we see the combo timer giving us much more time. Awesome. Grab the crystals for good luck. Thank you very much for watching. In the next one, I'll be mostly talking about making the glow box barrel. Goodbye now.